Nine to Five, you know, Nine to Five, E Williams, E Williams, CEO Face, and you know, Paco, Paco, Melly Mel, Melly Mel, and cost me, and it cost me. D to the R E, D to the R E, Wowzers, Wowzers. I try to tell these rappers, yo, go get away, Wowzers. We run this radio like, like, like every day, Wowzers. Hold on, be. Of course, tonight, like we said, we're going to be having a producer's roundtable. Of course, we've got three very talented individuals, you know what I'm saying? We've got Jay Mack, he's another beat maker, sure, you know what I'm sure, saying? Sure. He's determined to have his name called out even before the stars recognize who he is, man. Sure. Ooh, Jay Mack, you already know. He works with artists such as Sazy, Sif, Hard Body, and many more, of course, you know what I'm saying? He's here, of course, he's present, we're going to be talking to him. Of course, we also got Trons. He's a rising producer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just plugging out the beats quicker than you can whack them all. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's the bridge behind that catchy Money Girl anthem that you heard in the back, you know what I'm saying? Um, and of course, for him, it's only the beginning. Where he ends up, you know what I'm saying? It's up to him. That's pretty much all up to him, you know what I'm saying? And of course, we've got Jazz Feezy. He's also one busy individual working with producers such as T Minus, Boy Wonder. Of course, he has his own compilation CD as well called Jess Feezy Presents Unveiling the Raptures. And of course, we have him here. Welcome to Royalty Radio. Uh, Jess Feezy, uh, where are you from? Just let the people know. Promote yourself a little, your Twitter game and all that. Uh, originally from Barry, moved out to Ajax, uh, in and out of like Ajax, Scarborough, everywhere. Okay. Um, Twitter, twitter.com slash jazzfeezy. Okay. And just staying working, man. Always in the studio. Charles, what about you? Just introduce yourself and let the people know. Yeah, yo, my name is Charles. Um, originally grew up in Toronto, Ontario. Okay. On the J and Finch in the okay. section. Um, originally moved to Brampton after that. And yeah, my Twitter is twitter.com backslash um, Charles the Producer, T R O N Z D A okay. Producer. Right. And yeah, I'm just trying to get those hits up, man. I'm just trying to work. J Man. <laughs> oh, see, he's so hot. The mic just, it just, it just couldn't handle it. <laughs> ooh, 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 J Mac, ooh, J Mac. Yes, yes, man. Let me, let me man, tell y'all a little something stuff. about me, man. Okay. I'm repping every single hood near you. Yes. I'm repping the Haitians, I'm repping the Africans, I'm repping all of the foreigners. Okay. I'm repping everybody that done went through a lot of pain to get to where they at. Yeah. I'm repping everybody, you know what I'm saying? Most just feel it, just feel it in the beats. I let this beat speak for themselves. What would you say is defined as your sound? If someone was to ask you, what's your sound? What would you tell them? You know what? It's all about like clarity for me. Just like trying to do something new and innovative, okay. but like clear. Like I hate like stuff that's like too distortion, right. and it's distortion to the point where it's just like it's messy. Okay. I'm always trying to stay like clean, and I'm always trying to up my mixing game. Always, just always trying to learn. And Charles, what about you? If someone's to ask you, how do you define your sound? What would you define it as? To be honest, I really don't have a sound right now. You know, I'm just still experimenting, but. I just try to make something fresh, something I can bring new to the game, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I can't really speak for my sound, you know? Right. The listeners gotta spe speak for me, you know what I mean? So. Okay. Jay, what about you? R. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm trying to bring Bang to Canada. Okay. I feel as though a lot of Canadian artists, they don't really got that that attraction, that Bang. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing wrong with hip a hip-hop sample right. that slaps hard. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with putting some soul in it that hits hard. Right. That's going to have people bobbing in the club. You know yeah. what I'm saying? In terms of instruments and software, uh, for you, Jay, man, what type of software do you use in your production? FL Studio for the beats. I run Pro Tools to mix, master everything, record. You know, when my people come through, drop tracks. Uh, I got my inbox. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm still coming up. You know, I'm still coming up, and I'm using everything that I got to the best of the ability that I got. Charles, what about you? I'm just on that FL10, Fruity Loops, you know okay. what I mean? And I use synthesizers, you know, some some hardwares and some just, you know, just basic stuff. Same setup with these guys, FL9. Uh, we'd be here forever if I listed all the VSTs and all the different <laughs> drum loops and all that. So we'll just say FL9, okay. uh, gang of VSTs, and that's pretty much it. In terms of the inspiration, who inspired you guys respectively to get in? Started with Peasy. Who inspired you to get into the art of production? Um, I guess growing up and stuff, it'd be more or less like Timberland, um, Ryan Michael Cox, Jermaine Dupri, like just just the guys that were doing it like in the industry then. Charles, what about you? Uh, you know, I, I could just say that I'm still a young kid, so I might not go too old to the old generation. You know right. what I mean? But um, you see, right now Kanye West, Ryan Leslie, um, more mostly focusing on Kanye West because you know back. When I was growing up in the '90s or whatever, he was basically one of those upcoming hot, like hot um, artists or whatever. You okay. know what I'm saying? So I can mainly say him, but yeah. Man, what about you, man? Man, uh, 
Wow, man, growing up, I gotta say I was a big fan of Three Six Mafia's productions. Oh, okay. for sure, for sure. Uh, then, then, I mean, if you listen to Lex himself, he tells you that uh, his biggest influence were also Three Six Mafia as well. Right. You know, and um, man, I'm a big fan of Drummer Boy as well. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not even a hater. I'm a big fan of Trunks. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I heard the track he produced for Sazius. And Sight, man, boy, 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 I got some competition. <laughs> that's, just me, that's just me keeping it real, you know what I'm saying? At the best. What would it be about their sound that said, okay, you know what? I could probably take it and run with it. Like, what would you take from them if there was a particular producer that influenced you? What would you take specifically from them? I guess just being fearless, just like not even being scared to, because I mean, if you look at the formula of music, what it plays on the radios, there's like, there's every every era, whether or even every year, right. has like certain formulas, like, okay, we're gonna do like, let's say last year was like, we're gonna do like the Luger drums. There's a certain formula, and then there's some producers that'll take that formula and just flip it completely and be like, no, I'm just gonna do this sound. Of course, in terms of your inspiration for doing these beats, where do you draw your inspiration from? I could be listening to movie, movie scores, you know what I'm saying? Just anything, anything that can draw my inspiration. Like, I'll be listening to the weird things and I'll get the craziest ideas, you know what I'm saying? So, it really comes from anything environmental to everything, like I'm listening to another producer or whatever, you know right. what I'm saying? Do you prefer to sample songs or create a beat on your own? And with that said, if you do choose to sample a song, what would be three things to consider when you're sampling? Uh, I, I like to stay original just because down the road if anything gets placed or anything big happens it's going to be a pain unless the artist has a budget or their label has a budget it's just easier to go without a sample but sam don't get it wrong but like sampling sampling is a good thing you know what I mean because I've seen like Kanye like I've seen like top like most of um, the top producers right. flip samples and create like a whole different sound you know like for instance like Kanye, um, his old song Slow Jams. Right. That's actually one of the beats that got me into like producing. Like, yo, how do you do that? You yeah. know what I'm saying? But like me, I prefer like creating um, things from scratch. You know what I'm saying? Because you have more, you have more control on things. Right. You know what I'm saying? You could, you could manipulate it in many different ways. You know what I'm saying? Oh uh, man, the music I listen to, man, don't really sample. So I mean, when I sample, I really do step out the box, and I have brasses on top, like crazy synths, like. 40 different patterns on top of the sample right. to give it the feel that I want to feel. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of people always ask me, is that even a sample? Did you play that piano? Like, I mean, like, yo, I played that with my ear, you know, that was not a sample. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'd rather something that bang hard. How important is it, as fellow producers, how important is it to not necessarily get along, but to be able to coexist without any battle between you guys, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I hate this dude for whatever reason. I mean, how important is it that you guys have that cohesiveness in terms of you know working with one another if it comes down to that the way i see it is like uh i could learn a lot of things from jazz fees i could learn a lot of things from charles the producer right. you know what i'm saying so it's always good to have morals and keep good connects because you never know i might charles might hit me up for for a snare or or for for a sni uh, for a, for a sound that i need you know what i'm saying right. i could i know i could reach out to jazz fees he's real good people you know what i'm saying right. don't 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 get it twisted yeah, man, it's just the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Because music, in music, there's a lot of politics, you know right. what I'm saying? So, us producers, it's like, you know, like, we gotta we gotta stick together or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Right. We all help each other out, all bring in a new sound, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna have enemies, be sure you're never gonna work with them, ever. Because the industry is so small, you might be in studio with one person right. and say, you know what? This guy's snare sucks. Right. Guess what? That artist is going to be with the person that you said sucks, and he's going to say, hey, by the way, this guy said your snare sucks. Hey. So you have to be very careful of how you disrespect other people because it's such a small industry, people talk. Right. So uh, it's not going to burn bridges, but at the same time, you have to keep it competitive too because at the same time, you can't just be friendly with everyone and be like, Oh, you know what? In this record, I use this. Yeah. Next thing you know, that guy's jacking your sound, and all his next 40 beats and placements are your old sound. What's one of the worst things that you guys encounter when you're working with an artist? It's people who, artists who sit on beats, bro. Ooh. <laughs> artists who sit on beats, Ooh. and the fact that if they take too long and you shot that beat Ooh. to another artist, right. it could start a controversy of them, of that artist, that first artist saying, yeah. Preach, brother. It's <laughs> 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 oh man, yeah, but it could start, it start a controversy of the first artist saying, "This artist jacked my beat." Right. 
and then to the people, it's gonna it's gonna have a um, bad look on the second artist, right? Ever when they don't they don't really know them behind the behind the scenes. You know what I'm right. saying? Um, I definitely say like probably people not finishing records, and what's worse is like say you gave someone a record in 06 right you're 2012 now whatever right. and they're releasing the record from 06 <laughs> with your name on it it's like dear god bro, like, i've grown since then <laughs>